um, here in, in chat very quickly. I'm being prompted here. Let's see here. Okay, it doesn't like me using the the et sign, but it's it's kip at uh, berglantis.com. That's the the website address. Okay, or sorry, my email address, uh, and then my Skype ID is um, is Verglantis. Uh, so if you decide that you're interested and you you just want to um, get more information from me, uh, or if you would like for me to give you a demo uh, to 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 walk around the island with you and show you what is possible. Um, I'd be happy to do that. Thank you, Nelly. For some reason, when I type the, the ampersand sign, it wants me to close the session. And so I have all kinds of interesting issues I'm yeah, dealing with here. Wow, wow. Uh, on, on top of that, to show you what I'm going through today, um, um, our server is actually down at the moment. So I cannot point you to our website. Verglantis.com is currently not online uh, because of some, some server issues that we are having. Uh, so I've been dealing with that today as well. Um, so instead of pointing you to the website, I will simply offer uh, to, to speak with you directly uh, on an individual basis. So simply let me know if you're interested. Um, OK, uh, just a little bit more overview, and then I want to go into to question and answers. Um, uh, what we do here is it, we're basically we're not a school, and we're not trying to be a school. In fact, we, we, we're trying to, to make the experience as informal as possible and as, as, uh, as relaxing as possible. And uh, basically, anybody and everybody can offer an activity at Verglantis. Um, we, we see it as a, as a great thing uh, you know, when people want to volunteer their time uh, to help another person learn a language. Um, so uh, ideally, the person should be a native speaker or have a very good command of whatever language they are trying to teach. Um, but to be quite honest, we, we are really open to the idea of anybody and everybody offering an activity. Um, and, and what we do is then offer ongoing support. Um, we advertise the activity. Uh, we try to get participants coming to the activity um, and um, yeah, try to assist uh, in terms of sharing resources uh, and tools and, and, and things like that. And uh, we have activity locations. So not classrooms, but, but activity locations uh, where people can basically come and um, yeah, the activity participants and the activity organizers come together as learning activities. Um, and basically, uh, if you are an activity organizer at Verglantis, you can uh, decide what you do. So you are your own boss, uh, but with all the support that you want. Uh, so if you don't wish for any support, we stay out of your way. Uh, if you want support, we, we're happy to, to help you out anytime, uh, anytime you need it. Um, but otherwise, you're really able to experiment as much as you want to to offer any kind of activity that you that you wish to offer. Um, and, and otherwise, we, we just try to facilitate the process and to make it easy for you. Um, OK. I see here that someone has uh, contacted me in the past. Uh, please send me another email address if you have not, uh, if you have not re received a response from me. Uh, please do that, uh, kip at verglantis.com. Um, you will definitely hear from me this time. I can assure you of that. And uh, sorry if I haven't replied in the past. Um, OK, thanks a lot, Neves. I, I appreciate that. Um, great, let's see. Yeah, just to give you maybe uh, a general idea of what is possible in terms of activities, uh, very, times, very often the activities are, are, are quite simple, especially if you're new to Second Life. Um, it's a good idea to, uh, to perhaps not try too much, but to just to come in and kind of get your feet wet, figure out how, how to use voice, how to walk around. And so uh, a, lot, a lot of activities tend to be uh, stationary and, and conversational, conversational in nature. Uh, so the learning curve is not so, so bad or, or so difficult or so high, I should say, uh, in terms of, uh, of figuring out how it works. Uh, you can actually come in, learn how to uh, use voice, uh, learn how to walk around, and then do a very basic type conversational activity uh, without um, needing to know a lot about Second Life. And of course, there is a lot more that is possible, right? Um, uh, you can actually go and visit other islands um, and, and do all sorts of things once you, once you um, learn a bit more about Second Life. And, and we try to basically um, um, yeah, make it easier, try to, um, yeah, try to reduce that learning curve as much as possible or make it, make it possible for people to, to feel like they can do other things than just, uh, just stationary activities. Um, yeah, I've, we can, let's just go ahead and get into the questions because I'm sure you have them. I, 
Uh, let me first ask a question. Um, how many of you are familiar with Second Life? Can you just tell me yes or no? Yeah, I'll give you the, uh, the Verglantis uh, URL. It's verglantis.com, but as I said, the website is offline at the moment. It will be back up as soon as possible. Okay, yeah, Alf Alfonso, yes, of course. Okay, great. So we've got some experienced Second Lifers in here too. That's, that's nice. Um, I'll also give you a moment, I need to log in. We're also on Facebook, so I'll give you that URL. Uh, that's another contact point. Um, and we use this group on Facebook to basically stay in touch um, when not doing activities in Second Life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, okay, I was in the wrong tab. No, I was I was okay. smiling because Heather says that she hasn't been in Second Life for about three years until last week. Uh, for me, it's been right. even okay. longer. I mean, I was there in 2007, and I'm just going back now. I wanted to say, mm -hmm. Kip, that some people are having problems, people who've never been there before. I think Monica is one mm -hmm. of the people here. Um, right. But I know there are others I told you about that were uh, asking what to do in the Wizard IQ course feed, what can they mm -hmm. do if they're having technical, like crashing technical issues uh, mm -hmm. with with the viewer and they can't get in somehow? Right. Anything? Well, I think um, there are a variety of things which can be done, different uh, help groups that you can, of course, use um, and different resources that you can use. Uh, for example, within within Second Life, there's a place called Echo Island. If you're having problems with, with voice, uh, you can go to Echo Island and try to troubleshoot there. But I would point people to the Verglantis group um, simply because there is a community waiting there, a community of language teachers and language learners who are uh, more than willing to assist with, with uh, different issues that people might be having. No, but they can't get in. If they, well, you mean to go into your website and then they'll get support uh, uh, if they go into your to website? To the Facebook group. Oh, the Facebook. To the Facebook group. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the website is down at the moment. Um, yeah, website is currently down, uh, but should be up in, in the next few days or within the next few days. So I'll type that just to make it clear. Um, so the Facebook group is, is the go-to place at the moment. Um, and of course, you can contact me directly at my email address, uh, kip at verglantis.com. Or on Skype, uh, verglantis is the ID, the Skype ID. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and deal with any, any questions that you might have. I'm curious uh, what, what your questions might be at this point in time. Any questions at the moment? No problem, Heather. Okay. Yeah, and just to let you know, there will be another session, uh, a part two, and I hope to have everything working by that time. Um, and, and in part two, we'll actually go into more detail. Uh, so we'll talk about the pros and cons. Um, it will especially be of interest to, to language teachers, I think, the pros and cons of, uh, of virtual world language teaching. So, Kip, there's a link there that Thomas has added, if you could go in there also after the session. And answer okay. some questions as well. Sure. Oh, here's a question by Monica. What is the main idea of Verlantis? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, perhaps I, I should explain the wordplay uh, behind Verlantis, and that will give you a bit of an idea. Uh, Verlantis um, is basically a bit of wordplay, and it, it consists of the following words uh, virtual plus Atlantis uh, plus uh, virtue. These are the words that are involved. And um, the aim is basically to bring people together for, for language learning, um, for intercultural understanding, um, uh, to bring, basically bring people together for those purposes. And um, we are now starting to, to not only focus on language learning, but to open up to, to the idea of other, other subjects uh, being taught at Verglantis, uh, because uh, the logic is basically that in order to teach another subject, you also have to use language. 
And so this is an idea that we're, we're starting to entertain more and um, we, we simply need to get some activities going uh, for, for other subjects. Um, well, at, at present, we don't have any other subjects, but uh, we have in the past, um, a person has uh, expressed interest in, in, in teaching a science-related uh, activity, for example, or offering a, a science-related activity. Um, so anything is really possible. Um, whether or not you get the participants is, is another question. So we, we try to advertise it, to let people know about it, and then uh, ideally the activity organizer would also spread the word some. Uh, so we cannot promise that there is, you know, there will be demand uh, for the activity, um, but that is something that we try to, to help with. There's a question about activities. Maybe you can uh, mm -hmm. share some of the activities for English language learners that teachers mm -hmm. uh, can take mm -hmm. them through. Right. Well, there are. Um, it really fluctuates in terms of what we have uh, on offer at any given moment because um, uh, some of our activity organizers are on break, for example, at the moment. They've taken a break. Um, I will be offering, a, or I will try to offer a new activity in the very near future. Uh, to resume an activity called Tea Time. Um, and currently, we have uh, various activities for English. Uh, trying to remember, I can't go to the site uh, to confirm it, but uh, we have an ongoing Chinese activity. Um, and we have French at the moment. Um, but mostly English, French, Chinese. I think our Spanish activities are currently on hold, so we're trying to get those going again. But in the past, yeah, German as well. Uh, thank you, Abraxas. Um, but in the past, we've also offered uh, other languages, um, uh, so it's really it really fluctuates. Um, it depends on what our activity organizers are, are offering at any given time. Everything is done on a volunteer basis, so uh, we have to be flexible in that respect. If a, if a teacher or activity organizer needs a break, then, then, then that person can have a break, of course, um, because everything is done free of charge. There is no cost involved. Mm -hmm. There's a question and, uh, there. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you see it, Kip? Uh, can you give keep grievers out? Is it safe for newbies? You know, some people get attacked. Mm -hmm. Even Doris was attacked yesterday by uh, blood-sucking yeah. vampires, ghosts, and all <laughs> right. kinds. Right. I mean, sometimes I tried, for example, this is something that, and I've been around for a long time on in Second Life. Mm -hmm. If, for example, mm -hmm. you know, you try to go in and it says, well, your current location is not available or there's a problem mm -hmm. but we'll take mm -hmm. you a bit closer to that and then you go into this uh, madhouse mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um, right. so i suggest I not to yeah. go into the madhouse if anybody gets a message <laughs> when they go in you know just stick to just try it again keep trying until you go to where you should go which is uh, right uh, for this particular right. second life but w what happens when you do just get out of there right kip no, you know not well, stick uh, around well, regarding the griefing issue in general, I mean, we, we cannot um, uh, ignore the fact that it is an issue. Um, and I think it's an issue, generally speaking, online. Uh, you see this on YouTube, you see this on Facebook, uh, in terms of the types of interactions that people can have. Some are positive and some are very negative. Um, but we have recently taken quite a few steps to, to shield people uh, from these sorts of griefing uh, experiences. Uh, currently, uh, the Verglantis Island uh, has been restricted to group access. Uh, so basically, uh, you have to be in the, in the UWA Verglantis group in order to, to go to Verglantis. This is one reason why it's very important for you to contact me if you are interested in going to Verglantis now. Um, I, if you're already in Second Life, you can simply send me a private message. Uh, if you're not in Second Life yet, then please go to the Facebook group, group and message us there. Um, because we will need to do a voice check with you. Basically, what we try to do is, is speak with uh, any, any new member that wants to join so as to verify that, that we're dealing with a, a sincere person, a person who really is interested in language learning. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's not, uh, not anything difficult, not a difficult test or anything like that. We just simply want to get to know you a little bit, and, um, and then we can give you group access. Uh, have you visited uh, our area, Kip? Are you familiar with the, um, where we are right now for, um, for this MOOC? the Mad Hoopak area? I will go there um, after the session. Okay, I haven't been there great. yet. All right, so maybe we can meet mm -hmm. there afterwards. And you you know, if that's mm -hmm. easier for you, we can do that sure. there and we can continue the conversation. 
And then the Absolutely. questions may be more relevant once, every, well, whoever can't get there is problematic right now. So if you could maybe, mm -hmm. if, you know, if you're not sure whether you can go in, if you could try it now, and then uh, mm -hmm. later on we can go in there and continue with the questions. Sure, I can do that. And just to answer uh, Deep's question about why do people need to go into Psychic Life to get to Verglantis, well, it's um, actually not totally true because Verglantis has uh, two locations. We are also in another virtual world called Avenation. Um, so for people who are, are shy about going into Psychic Life for whatever reason, uh, we have a separate location uh, which is also group access only. Um, so we could uh, help organize activities there as well. Um, we're especially eyeing uh, learning institutes, universities, uh, anybody that wants a kind of closed group experience, a private experience, um, uh, that, that's what we're looking at using Avenation for primarily. Um, but uh, that is also possible in Second Life, of course. Um, and I'll go ahead and log in like you suggested. Um, hopefully I won't lose voice. I don't think I will. Yeah, I think that's important. I wouldn't take my, my high school students into Second Life. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I would not do it. But a closed, right. a closed um, environment uh, sounds a lot better. Mm -hmm. That's precisely one reason why we decided to, to have a plan B, so to speak. Um, and yes, Avenation is a virtual world, very similar to Psychic Life. Um, um, also has its, its affordances, its pros and cons, just like any platform. Um, but currently, that, that location is, is very underused. So it really needs to be uh, tapped into. It, it's, a, it's a resource that is sitting and currently being developed a bit, but it's ready for action. So if anybody wants to use it and, and wants free support along with that, uh, we can help uh, facilitate that. Can you explain the differences between Second Life and Other Worlds? Uh, like, I, I presume that Avenation is not part of Second Life. It's a virtual world, but it's uh, based on another right. system. Is that correct? Right. Right. It's basically one of the, uh, I mean, Second Life is basically the, the, the I guess, the mainstream uh, virtual world in terms of uh, popularity and whatnot. Um, and uh, several other alternative worlds sort of have shot up around uh, Second Life that are based on the OpenSim architecture. And uh, Avenation is one such world. Um, but there are also, there, there are several others which could be mentioned uh, in addition to, to Avenation. Are they the same? Uh, Are they based on the same principles, um, programming, and so on? Very, very similar. Almost identical uh, with some differences uh, in terms of, um, of course, uh, the, the community uh, that is there. Very often these worlds have uh, a much smaller community, so a lot less people. Um, and sometimes the physics in engine can be different, so you might feel a little bit different when moving around with your avatar. Um, sometimes better, sometimes worse, depending on your on your overall experience and your technical uh, setup. There's a question there about keeping your avatar. Can you keep it for other worlds? I don't think so, right? Well, in Avenation, you can keep the same name. It's possible to 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 use your Second Life name in Avenation. Uh, there's a way of doing that, um, but uh, you can't keep the same avatar. So you would need to to create a new avatar, and you cannot. Uh, it's not so easy to import inventory from, from Second Life into other worlds. It's been made more difficult over the years. It used to be easier. Is there an open source, I guess, open sims? Is that open source um, virtual world? Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing? Uh, yes. A, a lot of the open sim uh, worlds that are out there um, are, are open source, basically. They're based on open source architecture, but um, a lot of these, you know, some of these uh, the most popular ones are, are actually being run by companies now that that are that are for profit, but using something that is that is uh, based on an open source um, architecture. It's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's also possible to, for example, install if you have your own server, you could install OpenSim on your own server and, and do everything yourself. Right? Uh, we've done that in the past as well. Uh, so that, that's an additional uh, possibility. But that's a lot of work. Unless you get a It's work, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a question here in terms of resources, locations, clothing. Um, is other, are other virtual worlds comparable to Second Life? Alina asked that. 
Uh, well, typically speaking, I think Second Life is still uh, superior in, in terms of um, the, the types of things that you can buy or, or acquire for free. Also, you don't have to buy things in Second Life. There are a lot of so-called freebies. And um, I, I would say that, that the stuff you can uh, find in Second Life is superior, uh, better quality. And that's one reason that, that we, of course, wish to, to maintain our, our presence in, in, in Second Life as well, not only because most people are there, but also because you can find really interesting tools uh, that, and, and uh, items that you simply cannot find in other worlds. Holodex, for example, is, is a good example. Um, Holodex you can find uh, in other worlds, but arguably Second Life has the, the best Holodex at the moment. Can you explain what that is to people who don't know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Holodex is, is based, I guess, on, on sci-fi technology. Um, if anybody knows Star Trek, um, they, they actually made use of a Holodex um, in Star Trek. Uh, you're, it's basically a kind of simulated environment. So you, if you can imagine yourself in one room, let's say you're in an office-like setting, uh, it, it, with with a with a simple click of a few you know mouse buttons, uh, you can uh, change that environment into a totally different environment um, in, in a matter of seconds. So you can go from being um, in in an office setting to a beach setting to uh, a classroom setting, um, whatever you might have built or or acquired in in, um, in terms of holodeck scenes so-called holodeck scenes. So it's basically the ability to, to very quickly switch out the environment. Um, but you can do more with it. You can, for example, uh, on an island at Verglantis uh, with this holodeck tool, if I wanted to res, let's say, a few quiz objects or quest objects uh, scattered about the island, I could determine exactly where I want these objects to be placed. And I could, uh, with just a few clicks, I could make these, uh, these, these objects appear, or res, as we say in Second Life, um, uh, anywhere that I want them to appear. Uh, so this, of course, um, for, for this um, allows for a lot of different possibilities in terms of uh, pedagogy and in terms of like uh, in terms of enha enhancing um, activities. Role play, for example, uh, you could be on a ship uh, doing role play, and if you suddenly want to make the ship catch on fire, uh, you could you could do that, right? <laughs> Yeah, so um, I realize I'm probably a bit all over the place. Um, but there's any a question, other questions? Yeah, there is a question mm -hmm. there about role play. Oh, no, about quests. Um, mm -hmm. Nevis would like to know more about quests. Um, mm -hmm. Like a web quest, maybe? Is that possible? On I guess, why not? It would be a great idea, actually, to um, yeah, absolutely. conduct a t teamwork you know, in different parts. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be, you know, I just had great ideas for a web quest on Verlantis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could actually see it as, um, wow. as you could do a web quest, which, which mainly uses, makes use of web content mm -hmm. within the virtual world. Right. So you could click, click on a, uh, an object and, and be sent to a, to a link. Uh, you also have the possibility of using so-called print media um, in Second Life, which makes it possible to basically uh, put any URL on, on an object. Uh, so uh, imagine, yeah, really anything. Any, a face of any object could have a, a website on it or even a, a video. You could watch a YouTube video. So you could have quest objects that are either uh, quiz, quiz like in nature, connected with a, um, a quiz that happens to be somewhere online, or a quiz that happens to be in the world, uh, so within the virtual world. Or you could have quest objects that, for example, make use of media, where you click it and you could watch a short video and do something with it. So there's a, there are a lot of possibilities, really, really. Yeah, I think we just got some ideas here uh, with mm -hmm. Nevis for high school kids, right? It's closed. Mm -hmm. And second, I currently, I think the age limit is 16 plus, uh, for last I heard. Um, so that's the age requirement, I should say. And I, I could, of course, share a lot more ideas with, with people. I, I feel like I've, over the years, I've had perhaps too many ideas. Um, and I'm happy to share ideas. That's, that's also the nature of Verklantis. When I first joined, uh, I noticed very quickly that, that there seemed to be a lot of people who wanted to uh, sort of, how should I say, uh, hoard their own ideas and, and not share them with other people. Um, and uh, I, I, sought, I sought to do the opposite, to, to share ideas and to, to be open. Um, 
So I'm very happy to uh, to talk with people about different ideas I've had over the past. Um, I simply haven't had enough time to implement all of my ideas, uh, to be honest. Um, so the ideas are there. So are there people over Atlantis that help out, excuse me, that help out with, you know, if you've got ideas and we'd like to do things, so we could basically uh, get support, go to different uh, stations or different locations and get the support mm -hmm. that we need. Okay. Absolutely. And, and on Facebook, I think almost all of our activity organizers, if not all, mm -hmm. are in our Facebook group. Um, so it's not only myself who is who's offering the support. Abraxas is a person who offers an incredible amount of support. Uh, she's here in chat with us. Um, and several Excuse other me, people. Excuse me, what's her name? I, I missed that. Who? Uh, Abraxas. Oh, right, Abraxas. right, 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 right. That yeah. name looks familiar anyways. Um, yeah. Were you Abraxas in New Were you in um, you, Mu Nation, Move Nation, Move Nation? Yeah, Move Nation 2007, 2008. I think I participated in that. Yeah, maybe that's where we met. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because right. Abraxas looks, I mean, that name looks familiar. So maybe she was there mm -hmm. too. Okay, yeah, that's possible. Okay. Quite possible. And I should really give credit to the activity organizers. Uh, in my opinion, for Atlantis uh, is, is the community. For Atlantis is the activity that we have going on. Uh, that's really what makes for Atlantis. Um, so, um, yeah. The, the activity organizers deserve all the credit. These are people who volunteer their time to help others. And um, yeah, do you get lost? Um, I mean, sense of time. Do you find that it's very hard to detach yourself from the virtual world and and do other things like maybe eat, go to work if you work. <laughs> I don't know. Seriously, <laughs> is it right. really time? Cons Time consuming in a positive way. It's really a lot of fun, but still, do you find that it's it's very hard to leave? Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't have to be. You know, it, it, it was like that for me uh, the first few years uh, when I was in there. I really did it intensively. So I really went in there, and it was because I, I wanted to just sort of master the platform to a certain extent and figure out all that was possible. And plus, it was because I had a, a, an extreme degree of passion for for the medium. I, I saw the potential. And so I, I had many late nights, uh, but I've stopped doing that, and I have no need to do that anymore. Um, and we actually don't don't try to force you know uh, people to to stay at Verplantis all the time. We actually encourage people to simply come when we have activities, and otherwise to to seek balance, you know, to to also have a first life and uh, to also go and explore the rest of second life. Um, so it's not our goal to to win a popularity contest at Verplantis uh, per se. Um, so we don't try to do that to the activity participants, you know, try to make them feel like they should always log into Verplantis or anything like that. That's not a, at all our goal. And as far as the activity organizers are concerned, they, they also tend to mainly log in for the activities and then they log out when they're finished. So it's very much uh, like um, uh, doing the WizIQ uh, lesson uh, or, or even a First Life lesson, um, a private lesson or a group lesson or whatever. Um, it's also very much like TV and, and, and the internet in general, right? You could easily be on Facebook all day or, or watching TV all day. You have to know when, when to switch it off, so to speak. I don't know. I find that uh, we used to meet um, in Second Life on a porch in this place every Friday night for a number of years, and we would listen to music mm -hmm. and chat. It was like a get-together. It was very hard to leave. Uh, even now, mm -hmm. when I go in sometimes and I listen to music and you just sit there and it, it seems mm -hmm. to be, you know, a refuge from, sure. for, you know, sometimes yeah. just a way, you know, not to work. When you work, okay, you don't want to stay there for work too long. Right. But just right. to relax, um, it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's nice. And sometimes you, yeah, know, sure. you can't forget about mm -hmm. going to sleep. I remember you forgot sleeping. I mean, you didn't get much sleep <laughs> in those days, as I recall. In those days, yeah, but that's that's stopped now. That stopped. Okay. Uh, that, that, that has stopped, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's certainly there, there's this sort of escapist quality uh, of it for sure. There's also a lot of beauty uh, in Second Life and, and in virtual worlds, uh, which is very attractive, of course. And it does feel relaxing. Uh, that that shows you how immersive the environment can be when when, when you're sitting sitting on a beach, you know, under palm trees, listening to relaxing meditative music. It's it's very easy to feel like you want to stay there. Uh, what, what I've started doing is 
having Second Life run in the background, and then I do other things because I often, you know, do website maintenance and things like that, and and then online lessons and, and private lessons uh, here in my home. And um, so I, I often leave it running in the background just in case someone wants to message me. But I'm not always, you know, actively in there doing things. I, I simply have it running just like a browser. Yeah. Um, from, you know, like you yeah. would Skype or, or you know, Google, exactly. mm -hmm. uh, you know, chat or whatever, or Facebook mm -hmm. that's open, but you never really, yeah, that's true. Precisely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm looking for questions. Okay. <laughs> Another chat's fun. Yeah, people are sharing. So mm -hmm. what does a person do if they can't get an account because it crashes? That's, that's, um, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's very frustrating for people who want to get in, but they can't. Um, and you mentioned right. where you can set your audio if you've got problems with your sound. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you didn't yeah, mention cool. what to do if you can't, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can't get an account because it crashes. So where do you go? Okay. Well, well the account shouldn't be an issue. Uh, so, so you can get an account, but, but very often people crash for for a variety of reasons. Or simply have a bad experience uh, because because of their, their hardware um, on their system or, or the internet connection uh, that can be due to a variety of reasons. Uh, some things uh, which can be tried that we often suggest uh, if a person keeps crashing every time they try to log in uh, is to to use a lighter browser or light, a lighter viewer, I should say, uh, a so-called viewer. It's like it's like a browser for the virtual world, and that's what you need uh, for for Second Life. Uh, so there are viewers which which require, uh, which have less hardware requirements, so, uh, so to speak. And just to mention a few, uh, uh, Singularity is one, and and we can we can um, we can uh, give you a whole list of of different viewers that you could try out, uh, which are less demanding on on your system. Can you add that to the WizIQ? Oh, there's one by Tom. Can you add the list mm -hmm. to the WizIQ course feed? The discussion form. Absolutely, perhaps, no problem. Because I think yeah. that's where people, um, you know, they can't move because they're stuck. You know, they can't mm -hmm. log in, and I think that's mm -hmm. that's a shame. I had that for a long time ago, for a while, with right. my Mac. I don't know the. Well, Mac. you know. Yeah. Right. Well, well, not all computers are are Second Life compatible, um, or they barely meet the the requirements. And I can tell you the. The better the computer, the, the better the experience, and, um, and which, which makes sense, I guess. But it, it really can be like night and day. Uh, sometimes one thing that has been frustrating uh, for me is, is when I've been in, in Second Life dealing with someone uh, in an activity, and, and, and they were not able to move around like I was, or were not able to teleport like I was, or, or see uh, things like I was uh, because of their uh, particular um, hardware uh, situation. Uh, so that can be frustrating. Ideally, if this were an ideal world, everybody would have a, a good DSL connection and have a at least a, a, a low-end uh, gaming PC uh, or, or something to you know. Uh, yeah, I mean most most computers that you buy, buy nowadays should meet the requirements, um, but uh, it's it's good to to check to look at those requirements and make sure that that's the case uh, before before purchasing. And that's also one thing I, uh, some information I could provide you. Um, on the Second Life website, there is a list of, uh, of requirements, uh, hardware requirements for, for, for computers. Can you explain about teleporting? Should we go with anyone? Right. Yeah, teleporting is basically a way of, of, of travel uh, in the virtual world. So you, you can click an object, or you can actually summon somebody or send somebody a teleport offer. And that allows them to kind of yeah, to come to you, basically. And uh, there's a whooshing sound that you that you hear, and uh, you then suddenly appear wherever that person is or wherever that that object um, directs you. You can also use things uh, called landmarks. Landmarks are like uh, bookmarks, similar to browser bookmarks. Uh, just like a browser takes you from one website to another, a uh, landmark takes you from one virtual location to another. It could be a location on one island, such as Vertantis. So, for example, we have landmarks for the different activity locations, uh, or it could be a, a totally different um, island uh, in Second Life. 
Maybe you can explain some of these um, images that you brought that are so beautiful. Right. Yeah, those are just a, a few images. Actually, um, <laughs> I hate to even say it, but, but this, this island that we're looking at now um, has recently been uh, closed. So we have moved to a, to a uh, we, we've always had, or for the longest time, have had two islands. And what you're looking at now is an island called Knowingly. We recently decided to close it uh, simply because we want to focus uh, more attention on one island um, and try to get everybody to come there. Uh, and it was also, to be honest with you, was also a, um, um, one of the reasons was to reduce cost. Uh, there are costs involved in, in hosting these, these islands in Second Life. Um, so our, our current island is called Paradise Island. And uh, what you're looking at in this picture is, is the, or what you were, yeah, here, is the info, info point. It used to be the info point. Uh, we are now in the process of moving that uh, over to our other island called Paradise Island. Um, it's actually already there. Um, so uh, long story short, you will find what you see in this picture. You will find this on the other island. And uh, what we do here at the info point is simply try to provide uh, information. You'll find our activity calendar uh, in there. We use um, an activity calendar which is integrated with our Google calendar. Um, so all of the activities are, are listed there. Um, so you can check the website for any activity cancellations or changes. And you can also check uh, uh, within the virtual world for any changes. OK, I'm going to go to the other one because I think these are really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, okay. The rug looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> this was actually, I guess, my, my private location. I, I hate to say my, because really every location at Redantis is open uh, to everybody. So there's really nothing that's, that's necessarily personal. But this is a space that I personally spend a lot of time in. Let's, let's put it that way. Um, and uh, this was just one possible activity location. Uh, on the roof of this building, uh, there was um, a place where you could s uh, sit up there and uh, some, some chairs. So we had a really nice view over the island, uh, or of the island below. And um, really, any, any of our locations can be used as activity locations. And um, activity organizers are not limited to our current locations. We can, we can create most any environment that is desired. So if a person, uh, a, a teacher comes and says, look, I need this kind of an environment. I need an airport environment, or, or we want to do role play in a conference room, or, or whatever. Uh, we can easily create such uh, such a setting um, for them. Beautiful. It's really nice. And this, what is this? Yeah, this That's this was our, our old home point, um, and this was just a uh, an area to, to. It was just beyond our info point where people could come and and uh, and hang out a little bit uh, in, in between activities. Um, and the, the counter that you see there is perhaps interesting. It shows how many people are in Second Life. Uh, at this time, uh, there were 38,000, almost 30, 39,000 people, uh, or avatars. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, on average, there, there are between 30,000 and 50,000 or 60,000 uh, people uh, in Second Life at any given time. Thanks, Alfonso. Very nice. You're really only seeing the, the tip of the iceberg because um, uh, the, for example, you don't have—I don't have any pictures of Paradise Island here. And Paradise Island is arguably our our, our most beautiful island. Uh, it's currently being um, uh, renovated, I guess you could say, a bit um, uh, because of the, the closing of this this island here. Uh, things and things are being moved over, and, and we're, we're moving things around a bit. Will you be taking us, Kip, to um, Verlantis on the fifth? I'd be happy to. On the fifth. Sure. We could do that. I, I can even log in after this session now here in this IQ. I could log in uh, to Second Life and, um, and and talk with people in world. And, that's great. and also on the fifth, we could do that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Sure. Any questions? <laughs> uh, Nancy, it's Move Nation. I think that's the way it was spelled. Move Nation. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, Move a Nation, was it? Move a Nation? No, 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 it was Move Nation. Yeah, tour. Nancy's asking uh, if we can put a tour into the schedule. Uh, which schedule are we talking about? Oh, that's about? cute, yeah. Alfonso. Mook the Nation. <laughs> Mook <-a> Nation. 
uh, into the SL, like there's a schedule, there's some uh, slots, time slots. Yes, absolutely. If you yeah. Can, yeah, and I'd be happy, happy to offer even, you know, more of those. Um, great, if desired. great, because uh, yeah. tours, I think tours are, are really useful and we can go straight mm -hmm. from here. We can meet here in the classroom and then just um, go on a tour and, and we can also document it. I can, um, okay. I'm, I'm also recording this through Camtasia. And what I did okay. was I go into Second Life with the camera through WizIQ, mm -hmm. and it comes out really, really good on um, through Camtasia. Nice. Are there okay, are there videos? I think there used to be, but I haven't seen it where you can actually mm -hmm. uh, get a record a uh, a scene in Second Life. Is that did they get rid of that or something, or it costs money uh, now? You can take pictures, of course. Picture, uh, of, no, I'm of talking about video, video captions. Um, not with the viewer. I mean, there, there are video. Um, you can change the video settings. You can change how things look, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, but, yeah, not, but um, there isn't a camera. A video recording. A video That's camera, right. no. Right. Mm -hmm. Screencast o matic You use screencast o matic Okay. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. do that. On a PC, not on a Mac. Mm -hmm. I don't. Well, yeah, some people use Fraps. Uh, I use Bandicam. I kind of like that, uh, but it, there's Bandicam? there's not a free version. Bandicam, yeah. Yeah, I've heard of Fraps. Um, mm -hmm. Machinima. What is that? Ocam. Machinima is a very interesting way of, uh, of, of make, basically recording of videos uh, uh, within the virtual world, or also in, in gaming environments. And uh, you can find some outstanding examples on uh, of, of Second Life Machinima by, by simply looking for it on YouTube. Uh, so simply uh, yeah, do, do a search for that. I see there's an OCAM. Never heard of OCAM, uh, Alina. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, it doesn't work on Max. Thank you, Tilly. Um, yeah, I... I'm limit. Well, I could use my PC, but I prefer my Mac. Mm -hmm. So, what did you say? What is Machinima? It's uh, animations. Well, it, it's arguably, arguably a type of uh, a, a, new, a new, new art form, I guess you could say. Uh, it's basically the, the making, depending on what you do, of course, um, with it. Uh, you can use the, the virtual world environment for the recording of videos. And if you look on, on YouTube, you can find some, some excellent art, uh, art machine, you know, I, guess, I, I guess you could call it, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is highly artistic, um, some very intelligent stuff. Um, but you could have also, also use this for language learning, of course. You could, you could uh, record your, your role-playing sessions. Um, uh, I, I can imagine a, a variety of ways of using machine, you know, recording videos in the virtual world, uh, storytelling, digital storytelling, for example, mm -hmm. um, right? So you could either use still shots, uh, snapshots of, of different scenes, and then and then put your text over it for for basic type machine, or you could actually record the avatars moving, and which requires a bit more skill and and, and, a, and a better system, ideally, uh, because it, it does tax the system a bit. Sorry, I see Alfonso is going to be talking about that on April eighteen eighth, everybody. So okay. um, nice. We'll learn more about that. What's typo? Nice. Okay. Typo Island. Typo Island. What? That's I think she's joking. <laughs> making mistakes, because typos. typos. That's okay. <laughs> we're, we're all used to it. You know, a lot of us are English <laughs> teachers, but in the chat box, yeah. we all make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. That's okay. Feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Our time. Somebody, I don't know who did this. Did you uh, extend the class? I did. I don't know okay. if it's a problem. I, I was right. No, no, no. To that's okay. That's so. fine. No, that's fine. I just, I thought I did, and then I was wondering. Oops, I didn't, and we're still here. So. Oh, no, that's okay. That's, that's fine. <laughs> that's okay. okay. Um, oh, we've got an expert here on. Oh, Typoness. I thought that was a place. It sounds like a place. <laughs> in Second Life. <laughs> well, maybe we should have an island for uh, everybody yeah. so that we can make typos and feel good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's the uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, Kip, thank you so much for 
for this introduction. And can you give us a little bit of uh, maybe a little promo of what you're going to do on the 5th? Yes, uh, on the 5th, um, it will basically almost be a repeat of what what I did uh, initially on Was IQ. I attempted to go into the affordances, the pros and cons of Second Life. I'm going to try to do it in a bit more of a condensed way uh, this time um, and simply discuss the, the, the advantages and disadvantages of, of teaching languages in a virtual world environment. Uh, and there are quite a, quite a few things uh, which, which might be of interest to, to people who are seriously interest, uh, interested in getting involved uh, in, in language teaching in virtual worlds. Okay, that's great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There are the claps. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jara is here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, My pleasure. For giving us so much and in such a short time. But feel free to, there's the link Tom has added uh, to go in okay. and continue the conversation. There's also a dance. Mm -hmm. Nancy, should I uh, make the announcement? Don't go away. There's a dance uh, mm -hmm. in about how many hours? In about four hours? Um, Nancy, I think mm -hmm. you added it. Somebody added it uh, alongside Kip's um, slot uh, to move it and fix mm -hmm. it. But something around 5.30. It's there about four hours. Yes, you added it. Okay. Um, it's just below Kip's slot. Um, let me get the... Uh, um, I'll get the, uh, the link for you, everybody, so that you can... Um, Go there and take a look at it. And I think you're going to enjoy this because dancing is really amazing in Second Life. You really feel like you're, feels good. Yeah. So there it That's is. Right. <laughs> yeah. It does. Yeah. So there it is. Okay, there's the link. You'll be able to see it for April 1st. Any ap okay, April cool. 1st lies, anybody? Uh, anything that you'd like? Any pranks? Nothing. This is like the first April 1st that nobody said anything. <laughs> nobody did anything. I, I, I mean, I went to school today. I, I teach in a high school and nobody did a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> so, so what's happening? Yes. So maybe we'll do something um, at the dance. We have a, you have a chance to make up for everything at the dance. Okay, so come join the dance. It's for real. It's not a, a lie. <laughs> okay, so we're not fooling. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to stop the class. This was recorded okay. through uh, Camtasia. It'll be available on Vimeo and on YouTube. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kip. And I hope things work out. Technology, you. you know, is not perfect, but we are. That's right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll go ahead and log into second class. I look forward to seeing everybody <laughs> right. uh, in the world. As this okay. Yeah. Uh, I think, did I put that? Yeah, I did put the link. Okay. Thank you. I have it. Yes, thank you. I have you. it as well. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. Goodbye, everybody.